Hi guys and welcome to Carbon Garage. One of the strangest things has happened. It's Scotland and it's sunny. So we've taken the chance today to get out into the middle of nowhere. It smells of shit. We're going to talk about a few of the quirks that TVR have on this car. But not quirks purely for the sake of it. Quirks that actually have solid like reasons behind them. At number five, we have this sort of gap at the front of the door here. It looks like quite a nice design feature, similar to what came out on the Dodge Viper. And although it's a nice design feature, that's not the main reason that that's there on this car. The main reason is that, as you can possibly tell from some of the other panels, it's very, very difficult to get fiberglass panels that are made with the accuracy that you would typically get on a metal-bodied car. And as a result, the panel gaps often have a really, really bad fit. So what TVR did was, rather than sort of constantly struggle with this, is they thought, well, we'll just embrace it and we'll actually make it part of the, part of the design of the car, which is why you've got this reasonably big gap here, which looks quite cool. No one would really know that it's because they couldn't do anything better, but that's the reason. At number four, we have something else visual, but not quite as obvious. And if you look at the, the wheels very closely, what you'll see is the wheels at the back are actually bigger than the wheels at the front. And when I say bigger, I don't mean wider, which would be quite a common thing on sports cars, but they're actually a bigger diameter. So the front wheels on this car are 15 inch and the rear wheels are 16 inch. And again, there's, there's a, real, a decent reason behind that, which is that the higher sidewall on the front tires, because the tires um, are sized such that the overall rolling circumference ends up being about the same, the higher front wall and sidewall at the front means that you've got better handling feel, you've got more confidence on turning, and it contributes massively to this car just having the sort of handling, handling characteristics that it's got. Number three is something which is much harder to actually show you because it's something you really need to drive the car to experience, but it's got a really, really heavy accelerator pedal. And again, there's a good reason behind that. It's not just you know an engineer going absolutely nuts and saying we'll put in two springs for the sake of it. And it's because, as you can possibly tell, Scotland's roads aren't in the best condition. This is our, our major route between two of our biggest cities. No, I'm just kidding, it's not really. It's a little back road, but it is sort of indicative of what a lot of Scottish roads are like. In fact, this is probably in better condition than a lot of Scottish roads. So we've got a lot of potholes, we've got a lot of sort of horrible little bumps and things like that. And the reason that it's got such a stiff accelerator pedal and also a very long accelerator pedal is just to help maximise the amount of control that you've got of the car. If you had a really light pedal, it'd be really, really easy when you go over bumps so your foot just sort of bounce about a bit as you're pressing it. And the last thing you want is to accidentally release sort of 300 foot pounds of torque when you wanted 30. So as you can tell, this car is a convertible. But the way the roof folds is quite unusual, and you'll note here that the little bit of material here definitely is not enough to cover the entire roof. So what we have is we have these sort of rather ingenious little bars at the back, and they sort of pivot with the roof and they snap into position. And when the roof's all the way up, this middle section here gets sort of replaced with a, a solid target panel. And that means that you've got three options for the roof in this car. You can either have it roof fully on and fully closed, you can have it in a position kind of like what it's in just now, so it's sort of up, but without the solid panel there, which gives it sort of a target driving position. Or you can have it all the way back, which gives you sort of more of a sort of traditional convertible. But unquestionably, the, the biggest quirk of almost every TVR, um, certainly from the sort of 1990s, is that you'll know it doesn't have any door handles. And it doesn't have any door handles on the outside, and it doesn't have any door handles, if you can see that, on the inside. And it's great fun because whenever you get a passenger, they can never work out how to get in or out of the car. But what it has is a little electronic release. So if we look under the, the door mirror here, we'll see this little button. And if I press that, the door will pop open. And in a sort of a similar sort of twist on the inside, this strange aluminium knob in the middle, just behind the, the gear stick, is the release for the inside. And a lot of people think this is just TVR being sort of crazy TVR, but that's actually not the case. There is a good solid reason for this. In the early 1990s, and even today, it was very common for cars to get stolen by sort of joyriders. And joyriders are people who, they're not targeting a specific car, you know, they're not buying the car to sell it on or whatever. They're buying it on to basically race it about, so they're stealing the car rather, to race it about the streets, have some fun, and then probably when they're done having fun, they'll come to a location kind of like this, middle of nowhere, and we'll set the, the car on fire just to get rid of any evidence you know, their fingerprints and things like that. So joyriding was a really big problem in the, in the early 1990s, especially for cars like this. And what people would do is, in a car with sort of normal door handles, your door handle's kind of sitting here, and all of your locking mechanism exists within the door. 
So they would just sort of slide a coat hanger or something like that down this part of the door, between the window and the door frame, hook it around part of the locking mechanism, give it a tug, and then the next thing you know, your door's opened and your alarm and everything is going off. But 90s alarms probably weren't that difficult to bypass in most cases. So what TVR did in getting rid of the door handles was they got rid of that entry point because all of the, the movable parts of this locking mechanism are actually in this part of the door. So in most cars, the bit which is here is here, which is not the case on TVRs. And similarly, because there's no door handle on the inside, they couldn't just sort of stick a wire through, you know, the gap at the side where the rubbers are or anything like that and just pull the door handle. And it's, it is quite a nice solution. And this is a problem that still affects cars today. In fact, I saw a video on YouTube last week of um, a guy who just bought a, sal a salvage Tesla. So it didn't have keys. And in about 10 seconds, he just sort of stuck a little bit of wood in at the side of the, the window just to get open a little bit, put an air bladder in, sort of three squeezes on that, gets a hook in and opens the door. You know, door of a Tesla opened with the same sort of tactics they were using 25, 30 years ago. And he's in the car literally within about 10 seconds. And while well, there's plenty of other ways that you can break into TVRs, they're generally not quite as susceptible to the more traditional methods as most cars are. So there we have it, five TVR quirks that actually aren't quite as quirky as you perhaps thought they were. And although there's lots of things that TVR did which were bonkers for the sake of being bonkers, putting a four litre V8 in a car that weighs about a thousand kilos is probably one of them, some of them actually did have good purpose and good engineering behind them. That's everything for this time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please click like, please leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you don't miss out by clicking subscribe. Nothing makes a road busier than when you're trying to film things. I was topped here for a good 5-10 minutes setting up tripods and things like that. No cars passed. As soon as I start filming, it's just like a constant stream.